Coming in at number five, I think most of us remember the disastrous launch of the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare. The failed launch led to the resignation of Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius last April. Now a second act has launched with open enrollment underway until mid-February. However, a Supreme Court case that could dismantle the entire program hangs in the air. Until then, the Affordable Care Act says you must have health insurance or you could be fined. So if you are not covered, you might want to consider it. Whether you call them ISIS or ISIL, the terror group became public enemy number one this year. The group captured large areas in Syria and Iraq, murdering thousands along the way. U.S. sent airstrikes to their targets in Iraq, which slowed the militants' march to Baghdad. After, two graphic videos of U.S. citizens being executed were released. The U.S. coalition group has led airstrikes on Syria, but the prime minister says that the Islamic State has not been weakened. Protests broke out all over the nation after Michael Brown, an unarmed black teenager, was shot and killed by white police officer Darren Wilson. After a grand jury decided not to indict Officer Wilson, racial tensions escalated throughout the nation and even in Iowa City. Wilson later resigned from the force because of safety concerns. The midterm elections proved to be a referendum on President Obama as voters gave Republicans control of the Senate. Iowa also welcomed Joni Ernst, the first female to take the U.S. Senate seat. Ernst seized 52.2 percent of the vote and defeated Democrat rival Bruce Braley by 8.5 percent. In coming in as number one, the Ebola epidemic, starting with a few cases in Guinea, soon broke out to the deadliest outbreak of Ebola. The virus spread throughout West Africa, claiming over 5,000 lives. In September, the first case in the U.S. was diagnosed to Eric Duncan, a Liberian citizen who traveled to the U.S. and later died from complications. Duncan's death raised questions of the U.S. readiness to control the disease, and hospitals around the nation and even Iowa City hospitals took measures to be prepared if a case entered their doors.